internet welcome back to my shop my name is Jim Stewart and today I'd like to do a video on re-leathering uh, cuckoo pipes it's been quite a spell since my first video um, and I actually started a video showing how to re-paper and re-leather a real nice set of Beha cuckoo pipes Unfortunately, my camera angles were wrong, so I had to start over. Anyway, I'm going to cover these, uh, or re-leather these, and uh, uh, it, you're going to learn the same thing, but I'm going to leave this paper on there. I'm not going to get into uh, papering. Uh, that's a pretty easy task anyway. Um, I will mention, though, that I personally like to uh, repaper the bellows, uh, sorry, rather the, the pipe itself and the bellow top um, before I put the leather on. However, some people like to put the paper, the decorative paper, after they've put the leather on and have that paper slightly cover the edge of the leather. For me, my preference is the opposite. I want to do this video to show you how to re-leather cuckoo pipes in short order. So let's get started. Okay, I want to talk briefly about leather. Uh, you may have your own source for leather. Uh, I've put a link for where I get my leather below, which is Columbia Oregon Leathers in Pennsylvania. They have good quality leather, uh, great people, and uh, you can do an online order. And I want to mention too, don't forget to ask for your free sample of the um, high-tech fish glue. Uh, they will they will give you a sample. And um, when you navigate the, the web page, you're going to see that uh, on the third sentence down, it says for clocks and small bellows, the triple X thin. Okay, that is this one right here, and I'm telling you, it's too thin. It's, you're you're going to put it on there, and no matter how well you make your creases and your folds, it's going to end up blowing out the front and the sides like a balloon. It's real difficult uh, for to work with, for especially for someone if you haven't done bellows before. That is what I'm going to be using today, and that's what I recommend. Um, you can get into the medium uh, thickness and you'll probably be fine. You're better off going uh, a little more that direction than the thin direction. Assuming that these pipes are coming out of a cuckoo clock that you're working on and going right back into that same clock, um, you're going to want to just take note of the eye hooks that the lift levers are connected to, you'll want to get those back in the same spot. So just take a, um, I'm just using a little Sharpie here, but you can, you can also use a pencil. We're going to grab a pair of pliers here and we're going to start removing these little eye hooks and just give them a twisting motion and grab yourself a little container to put everything in so you don't lose it. I'm going to take that off. Start, see how easily that leather tore? It's really old. And chances are this was put together with fish glue. So I could take warm water and uh, see if the rest of that leather comes off of there with ease. And again, that's the purpose of using the high tack fish glue. So I promised you short order on this. I'm not going to take warm water and put it on this wood because I want to immediately go right into re-leathering. Take the side of this putty knife, works pretty well. Just kind of pull it off there. Then I clean it up with a little, a little piece of sandpaper. You just want to see as much of that 
wood showing as you can. You don't want the glue to just be adhering to the old leather because that's good chance that that's just going to separate off of there. So you're going to need to measure all four sides. So we're looking at two and a quarter and then that's going to bring us to four and a sixteenth and we're going to place that over here and that's going to bring us to about six and a half and last but not least if we want to completely cover the back side we're looking at about seven and a half inches in length so for the width generally speaking an inch and a half is about what you're going to need for the average uh, opening size. Okay, we're going to take and you can either mark these lengths or you can just go ahead and cut it. I like to use an X-Acto blade. Get my sharpest one out here. Probably be this one. Oh no, I don't need a helper right now. And now you're sitting on exacto blades. Not good, kitty. Hey. Can't see what we're doing here with you up there. Okay. Uh, we take the X-Acto blade and we just run it down that straight edge. Make a nice clean cut. And do the same on the next one. No, honey. That's not working. Got a shop kitty here that's interested in everything I'm doing. So the next step <clears throat> is to take the top and we want to place it on there about center and we want to bring both sides up and over to make sure that we are ending up in the right spot. So you, uh, you can see I could have shortened this length a little bit. Uh, it looks like we're going to get a little overlap, but that's okay. Um, but I want to make sure I end up in the middle. So that looks pretty good. So I am going to just make a little reference mark on the flat side of the trapezoid here. So I know I just cut myself out a little rectangle. And that is going to get glued right here onto the back. Now I know you noticed that when I wrapped that around, it overlapped. This is an important step because this is what's going to hold everything together while you are spreading it and gluing the rest of the, wrapping the rest of the leather on there. Take my little brush. And you can put these together and paint it on, actually, and speed up the process that way. You only want to get it on that one surface that you're going to be putting the leather on. So the next step is I'm going to take that strip that I made my mark on. And if you remember, I put it on the flat side. Make sure that that um, opens and closes freely, okay? And the idea with that was that the back side is going to get held in the correct position while I line this up and glue that on. So I'm going to just recheck myself here, and it looks like I'm good. So we're going to get the little brush here 
and we're only going to paint on the lower surface here of the, the just on the front edge of the of the bellows top now and only halfway up on that upper part right here so we're only going to go to where we know the leather is going to be adhered here's my reference mark I'm going to take this and I'm going to open it up and I'm going to drop that front edge halfway on there and we're going to get the lower edge all the way down to that lower edge of that leather. It's more difficult when you've got the pipe still attached. So you, you can make your adjustments. If you need to make adjustments you're going to need to make them quickly. So I want to make sure that everything looks straight and so far so good. And as you can see I can lift this up and it's just already stuck on there. And if I try to peel that off you can see I can still do it uh, but I don't have much time. So if I need to make a correction now's the time to do it. And with that high tack fish glue you would have absolutely no problem making adjustments and readjustments if, ne if needed. Continue on. This is the glory of the contacts mentis. Very, very quick. So we're going to take now and we're going to do the same over here as we did on the front. And we're only going to do one side at a time. And we're going to put that we're going to put that glue on there only halfway on the top half of the bellows top and then the full ledge of the bottom side. Okay? I like to lay it back down on the table and make sure that it, everything stays concentric here. And I just bring this straight up like so. Okay, so I've got the contact cement on that side now. And it's just a repeat of the other side. I'll turn it around so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to just bring that up straight and rub my finger over it. So, oh, just take cut that cut a nice straight line so that the uh, bellows looks good when you view it from the side. And then I just take the exacto knife here and try to trim a nice straight edge there. I want to make sure that I kind of come straight across here and I can use a scissor for that so that I have that little hinged part. There we go. And same on this side. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to repeat that same step on this side. Come from that upper edge right where the leather is making that corner there. And then I kind of push down on this and see where halfway is on that upper half. And come down with that. Take the scissors, get a little straight cut over to it. And then you can just take the X-Acto blade and just follow that bottom edge. Come 
straight into it so you so that you have that little hinge for the back side. Okay. Alrighty. I'm gonna have to open up the contact cement here. Get my little disposable brush. Get a little bit of cement on there. That's probably enough for the whole thing here, so I'm going to close that. Like so. Fold it over. And there's my hinge. So I have a nice thick double hinge in the back and that's where it's going to get most of its stress opening and closing. So take my pliers and give that a good firm closure there. Okay, now again I'm going to take the uh, I'll take a straight edge with a rounded edge on it, not the not the pointed edge because I don't want to pierce the leather and I start by coming in on the sides get a nice little crease going then push the middle front middle in and just work it keep doing it until you and, and, and slowly close it as you go make sure you're all the way in on both sides now you see how that's nice and flush. So I'm going to give it a good squeeze, which is going to crease that leather. Okay. And you can always put a clamp on here and clamp this thing closed for, for an evening or so. So looks like they don't quite have enough weight in them. So this one is going to also require a little extra weight, but we're not getting that ballooning. So as you can see, I've set myself up here. Um, I opened up the uh, other bellows top and all it had in it was this little sliver of lead, not near enough to, to actuate it correctly. Uh, so I'm going to show you a quick method of remedying that. So as you can hear, dropping nicely now. That leather's really warmed up from me from me doing this. So here's what I did. Take yourself some solder. Uh, in this case right now all I have is this small solder. Uh, I suggest you get yourself uh, some hopefully you have some thicker solder laying around. Just take that solder and Run it into a little ball, smoosh it together. If you have real thick solder, then uh, you won't you won't have to do this. You can also use that lead-free solder they use to solder uh, copper pipe together. Uh, most people have solder laying around, so a pretty good-sized ball there. Take your soldering gun and uh, I'm going to just hold it right over the top of this here and I'm going to start melting that ball of solder. Just going to make a puddle of molten lead. Get all of it in there. There we go. That little piece in there. And I'm going to let that cool. And it's a nice fast method of conforming a 
piece of lead into that round hole that was already there. Now, yes, you can see it, um, but you can always throw this on the photocopier and make a copy of one side. You can just take one small piece and match it up up there. But if you want to recover the whole top, well, lots of ways to do that. Okay, once you're completed with everything, I do want to mention, take yourself a bottle of, of water, small mist bottle, and mist that leather lightly till you see that it's become damp, and then close it up, take and put a clamp on it, let it sit for 20 minutes or so, and once that's dry, you're going to find that it's always going to drop right back into that folded position, even if you hyperextend it it's not going to end up ballooning out. About finished with the project and as you can hear we got the correct amount of weight to get these to drop and sound like they should. Uh, I did take and cover one of the tops where the uh, weights were. I wanted to share that with you and that took me all of about five minutes. Um, I really didn't spend a lot of time matching the color perfectly on the uh, copier. I think I did three shots at it and took this one, cut a little piece off, used, uh, I used tight bond, you can use Elmer's glue, you can use contact cement, and then uh, when I was finished, uh, let the glue dry. I just held my hand over it, took it outside, took some flat crystal clear spray and gave it a shot, let it dry, gave it a second shot and called it a day. And as you can see, it, it looks pretty presentable. Um, and that clear coat is just going to keep that regular printer paper. I didn't do anything fancy. Uh, it's going to keep it from uh, obtaining moisture and having the color come off. So, um, big difference. Okay, You can spend more time, like I said, I'll probably, who knows, these are spare pipes. I may end up recovering them with an entirely different paper. Now, I did come across in my collection of old pipes here, and I wanted to show this to you. So, I didn't do the second one. I only did the first one, and the reason is because Here's that thin leather. You see what happens? I don't, I don't even have to lift it very high. And no matter what I do, it's just ballooning out. And if it drops hard enough, you're going to see it's going to balloon out all the way around. Too thin. All right? My recommendation is stay away from the thin, ultra, triple X thin. Okay. And if you're going to be photocopying and totally recovering. Uh, that's how I did it. I just took and copied one side of the pipe and uh, I didn't use this sheet because I, I wanted to uh, adjust the color and that's a remnant left over of the color I used. Uh, so basically I just photoshopped the sides together to make one swatch and you won't see that when you cover your pipe. You can buy some expensive marbled paper and do a real nice job, but this will save you some money and time. And they come out, they come out pretty nicely. So, just an option. Okay, I want to thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And hopefully we'll see you back here sooner than later on another episode of Antique and Vintage Black Forest Cuckoo Clock Repair. See you then. And then took some uh, clear, crystal clear, flat, crystal clear. Come on, Jim. Cut that. And just bring that up straight. Mm-mm. Got a kitty here.